refer to my notes and then I'll, I'll try not to just read it because that's kind of boring. Um, and how this will work is uh, I'm going to just kind of intro a little bit and then um, Dale's going to actually have the meat of the sermon. And believe it or not, Yvonne, I think you're going to get this sermon really well. You'll know what I mean in a little bit here. So something you said just before. So last week, um, Dale was making light about he and I preaching in Pastor Yow's place, which is kind of funny. And we all got kind of a laugh out of that. But um, and, and it is kind of funny to think, actually, in some ways, that we would be up here talking, you know, I don't like saying um, preaching because we're not preaching, we're really just talking with you guys. Um, but it's kind of funny in a way, but on the other hand, we are just Christian guys and talking with other Christians, so it really shouldn't be tough, right? Um, you guys make it easy anyhow, so I don't think you guys would be overly critical, so. Um, and, and I did want to say that uh, as, you know, we can't take Pastor Yao's place. Um, but as elders of the cross, we feel it's our responsibility that if we need to let him and Mela get away and have some time away, that we can step in and, and, and talk. Um, and I want to include Sing in that too because, you know, it's, we're the, part of the elder team and we're making this work. We rely on him for some of the technical stuff and audio and stuff, so he didn't volunteer to come up and talk too much. So, yeah. All right, so even though it's not the same church service we're used to, it's still church service, so we're all here for the same reason. So, all right, as we put this message together this week, we admitted that we're not experts in sermon creation. I kind of touched on that, but I just wanted to drive that one home. But we did our best to have a good conversation with you. Um, we welcome your questions as we do talk. It's okay, if you have something you want to say, just raise your hand. Um, you can question anything we say or join in um, if you have a comment, you know, it's, it's great because this is a conversation that we are having about our God, so um, we welcome that. In saying that, um, i got to go to the next slide. There's going to be no Galatians today. Um, that's Pastor Yao's summer series he's doing right now, and we didn't want to interrupt his his thought process as he's as he has going so no Galatians today we're not doing that serious so we kind of went off the off the tracks here a little bit and hopefully it'll make sense and then Pastor Yao will pick up on that next week so all right so from there Pastor Yao uses a clicker I got to find the key on here always to press so that's always interesting which key are you pushing just okay. hit the space bar. Okay, thank you. Close to the next one. <laughs> All right. All right, so from there, we're taught how important is a strong foundation. That's today's sermon title. Foundations. You talked about a crumbling foundation at your current residence, you want. So how important is a strong foundation? And we're going to dig into that kind of deep. Um, Again, Dale's doing the meat of this subject, and uh, he really, he, he's got some good notes on it, so this should be all right. Um, we all have a foundation, whether we're talking about our homes, our church building, our lives inside of us, we all have a foundation. Um, i got to know when to switch to the next. All right. The question to answer is, how important is a strong foundation? as I read on the slide, you know, is it important or can you just, you know, have a foundation anywhere? Well, painting the car, they say it's 95% prep and 5% laying the paint. Oh God, I think it's 99.9% .9 foundation. I mean, one tenth of a percent of what you do. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, exactly. So it's pretty important. That's, that's kind of where we're going with this. So, um, and you might think, uh, you know, how can we relate a strong foundation of a building to our lives? Well, it's actually not that hard. Um, it's kind of strange, but as I go to the next slide, as you can see, uh, it's a picture of the back room when we got here. Uh, it was a mess. Um, it really, 
you know, there's things about this that were just a mess. Um, the floor covering was ugly, smelly and torn. The walls were dirty, had holes in them, needed paint. There was dirt and dog hair in every corner in this place. The outside had weeds and broken bottles. There was garbage laying around, actually inside and out. Um, in the interior walls and back, we found faulty wiring. Uh, there was, I don't know if you can see the black tape, but there was a screw going through that live wire in the wall. Um, and that it's behind, it's in between the sheeting and the two by four in another spot, which was squishing that together, causing it to wear. The back of that outlet box is cut off. So instead of being properly installed, it's, it's a fire hazard, it's just waiting. And you'll see how the two by fours are random. Anybody that's ever did any building knows, you know, you put your two by fours in at proper spacing, the proper way, up and down, not, they were random all over. So that was just kind of a, a little picture of that, uh, kind of shoddy construction. So sometimes our own exterior can look like that. I know it's kind of interior exterior, but our own exterior can look like that. Um, we can be broken down and, and we can be, you know, not looking so good. Um, things can look pretty rough, um, just like the building looked. Or maybe we look really good. Maybe we have a lot of nice things to wear, nice car to drive, beautiful home. Maybe we have everything in order as everybody else sees. But what, what's inside? What, what does our foundation look like? Um, underneath the drywall, the carpeting, um, we can be a mess. Um, and it's really about what makes up our core, as I just kind of mentioned there, our foundation. This building wasn't much to look at. One could say it, it didn't have much hope to be a church building. It really didn't. When we walked in here, the smell and the look, and really, we're gonna have church in here? It was, it was bad, it was dingy, it was bad. Uh, but once we took up the flooring, that was a, a big deal, you guys helped with that. Um, picked up this flooring and got that out of here. Uh, we saw what was underneath. Um, we tore some of the stuff down and back, and we started to realize that this isn't such a bad building. Um, of course, we had already bought it by then, so that's, that's a good thing. Uh, but we found out there was a really good concrete floor in here. It's on a really good foundation. The walls are really strong. The exterior walls are strong. We looked at the roof. The roof is pretty new, actually. It's in good shape. So there is a good foundation here. So it's a, it's a lot to, to build on. Um, and there's hope. You know, I, I said, you know, a minute ago that, you know, we, we wondered if there was hope for this building to be a church. There is hope. Um, just like in our lives. And we have hope in our lives. Um, and that's what Dale's going to talk about in a little bit here. So... So the sermon question really is, what foundation are you building on? Uh, a foundation that's strong, um, solid, or is it muddy or sandy and, you know, that, that's what it is. And it's the same, you have to relate that to our lives as well as using the analogy of the building. If this building was built on a swamp, it wouldn't be standing like it is. It wouldn't be straight and firm. Um, it has good foundation. And our lives need to have that too. If we have good foundation, it doesn't even matter if the drywall or the clothes get a little rough. Your foundation is good. So um, with that, I think Dale's going to step forward. And he's going to take over from there. So good luck, Dale. Thank you. <laughs> I was worried you were going to lead right into there, Pastor. He said a good foundation. <laughs> yes, he did. He set me up really well. So, sermon question. What foundation are you building on? It's really helpful at times to refer back to what is a definition of a foundation. And there were others, but I pulled these. A uh, foundation is an underlying base or support, especially. A whole masonry structure, you know, foundation, concrete uh, footings. A body or a ground upon which something is built up or overlaid. It's a limestone foundation. 
And Ed and I thought we'd leave the last one in there. The cosmetic usually used as a base for makeup. That's not what I'm talking about. If somebody's hoping that that's the one we're going to use, that's just for a little bit of humor. So, but the concept, and Ed alluded to that, is that it is something anchored, solid. It's reliable, unchanging, trustworthy. You can rely on this. Uh, chairs, you're all sitting in chairs. That's, you're on a solid foundation. Uh, consider that contrast of put that same chair on sand. What's that going to do? How's that going to shift? And how are you going to be a little more careful with how you put your weight on there? Or an improperly constructed road. If you don't have a good foundation, the road we live out on will go through a swamp. And a hundred years ago, they probably had tree trunks laid down on that and gravel on top of that. Well, I think they blacktopped over it and then it was like the gravel indentures was. They've rebuilt that foundation so the road is strong. Building a church or a family or life has to be based on a foundation. What is it that we're using? Ephesians 2.20 says that together we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone of that foundation is Christ Jesus himself. Christ is the cornerstone. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So, Christ, the gospel, his death on the cross, in our place, realizing our need for that sacrifice, and the gospel presenting the need for repentance and forgiveness. Another passage that's really good that I wanted to share is Luke 6. It says 48 to 47. I'm actually going to back it up to, uh, I'm sorry, Luke 48 to 49. I'm going to back it up to verse 47. And consider the imagery in this, you know, the word picture that it creates. Verse 47 starts out, I will show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and then follows it. It is like a person building a house who digs deep and lays the foundation on a solid rock. When the flood waters rise up and break against that house, it stands firm because it is well built. But anyone who hears and doesn't obey is like a person who builds a house right on the ground without a foundation. And when the flood waters sweep down against that house, it gets washed away and collapses in a heap of ruins. So, tell me, I'm looking for feedback from people here. What are the foundations that the world seeks to convince us can substitute for Jesus? Joan. Money. Money, okay. Others. Power. Power. Yep. Fame. Fame. Relationships. Good. Yep. Thank you, Bob. Jobs. Jobs. Good. Looks. Appearance. Sure. Self-image. Yeah. Thank you, Julie. What did Julie say? Self-image. Sorry, self-image. I should be repeating those. I apologize. So what we've got so far is power, fame, relationship, jobs, appearance, self-image. Anything uh, else come to mind? Title. Title? Yeah, title. Okay. I threw some together too while I was preparing for this and it's nice when I hear that I wasn't completely off track with what uh, was being thrown out. You know, you can, your foundation may be your family, spouse, that's, that's your key, uh, friends, work, you know, that comes with identity and self-image, money, that one's said. We just rely on ourselves, self-made man idea or self-made woman. Politicians, they're going to solve our problems and take care of things. We just have to get the right people in office. Uh, reputation, that was given out there. Um, government, they're going to fix everything for us. Good works. Doing the right things. Hey, I've just done good things, so that's my foundation. 
and we're thinking about this in terms of heaven uh, and, and being uh, considered right for heaven. Donations, oh, I give money away, all these charitable contributions. You know, not to pick on them because they'll probably go to some good places, but uh, watching public television sometimes, oh, courtesy of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation or some other foundation. In some way, thinking we've earned salvation. We rely on drugs or alcohol, something else to dull the pain and to make us feel better. Or even other religions, and it isn't, we're not talking Jesus Christ, and we should be looking to one way. So, good. I'm glad we covered a bunch of those. Um, here's what we were tearing up, or actually laying down at this point. Oh, no. This is tearing out, yes, sorry. Yeah, you can see the stains in some of the carpeting and the pile up there. This is what we were getting. Sometimes it takes peeling back that veneer, that reputation, that uh, title, that whatever it is that you're relying on for foundation, or for your foundation, and getting to the real foundation, which in the analogy is this is towards Jesus and the gospel. All of these items that we discussed, okay, that works too. All of these items that we've discussed are sand for the chair. They will shift. They're not always steady. I mean, as much as you may have the idea that I'm a steady person, Julie can tell you, uh, I'm not always that steady. <laughs> I appreciate it at least. No, hey, this is my sermon. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, now, what I want to do is I don't want to diminish the importance of those things because spouse and friends and family and those things do, can help support us in our walk as believers. But they aren't Jesus. They aren't his death on the cross. They aren't getting us uh, justified before God. And they can't provide the salvation and forgiveness that Jesus' blood does. We remain regardless, dirty, rotten sinners in the eyes of a holy God. They can't pay the penalty for sin. They can't provide our redemption. And if, redemption, if you're not familiar with the term, it's like the coupon at the store that gets you in, or a discount. Break on the price that you have to pay. Christ paid the whole price. It wasn't just a coupon for a few bucks off. He paid the whole penalty for our sin. You pay nothing. Put your faith in Jesus. Through Jesus, we are clean, we carpeted, replaced or repainted. He asks for your obedience. And yet when you fail, we all do. His blood requires <coughs> even that. Through Jesus, we are clean, recarpeted, repainted. He is the foundation beneath all of those things that otherwise people see. We cannot repair ourselves. That takes Jesus. The Bible says in John 14, 6, that no one comes to the Father except through me. If you haven't memorized that one, that's a good one to memorize. There are truly only two ways to heaven. One is to live the perfect and sinless life. The other is faith in Jesus' substitutionary death. I don't know about you, but I can't rely on my own ability to live a perfect, sinless life. A moment from now, I will have sinned and kicked myself out of that opportunity. And I've got a whole history of it before now. But because of Christ's death on the cross, we all have an opportunity because he bore our sins when he allowed himself to be crucified. So what are you trusting in in your life for your foundation? What are you standing upon? Are you turning from that foundation of shifting sand so that your chair has something solid, Jesus, and the gospel, where you're standing on that rock? If you have not felt your need for a savior, if you are not aware of or not wrestling with a sin, then perhaps you're not seeing yourself as a holy God sees you. You need, we all, we all need Jesus and the gospel as the foundation of our lives. Sin and the temptations, the messages that the world feeds into us, they are our struggle. 
And now we're facing COVID. We've had riots in our cities. We've had things before that, though. A believer uses regular time in God's Word, prayer, and the conviction that the Holy Spirit uses to help us to fight those sins and those temptations and to respond to the messages of today's world. We will not be perfect. Romans 6, 23 to 26 says, for everyone has sinned. Everyone. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, in his grace, freely makes us right in his sight. We are justified through Christ's blood. He did this through Jesus Christ when he freed us from the penalty of our sin. For God presented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life and shed his blood. One thing to remember from this that we hope is communicated is that a life built on the foundation of faith in Jesus Christ will stand. The world will buffet you, will knock down, but at the end, <coughs> Uh, or during, the, during this life, uh, it is a solid anchor from which to look. When the world is telling you, how, or Satan is telling you how miserable you are, what a failure you are, you're no good at this, or your addiction has got you again, no, Jesus covers my sin. I get behind me, Satan, and I can go to Scripture and find strength in that, find your foundation. And at the end, when we all pass on, and we are able to stand before our judgment. On what grounds should you enter? Faith in Jesus Christ. So what foundation are you building your, your life upon? Yeah. He seeks, he seeks to undermine you at every and turn. And get you in, their, in the things that mean the most to you, which for most of us that have children, you know. Thank you.
thank you for sharing that, John, because that's what uh, tough things happen in our lives and it helps us. If everything were coasting along really well and we felt really confident, then we'd think we were doing it all on our own in some sort of way. And that we didn't need faith. We didn't need God. It's when we get hit by those things. Uh, and not while you're going through them, because I don't, you know, some, but some people have always said, oh, Lord, strengthen my faith. And be careful what you ask for, because you could end up going through some very difficult things that are hard. But it's through those hard things. Not, you know, well, it's the old analogy, no muscle gets stronger through disuse, or no, no use, lack of use. Um, uh, I like to ride on something that the sister just got through saying. In my personal life, one of my prayers is, God, do not take my stumbling blocks away from me. Because as an individual black man, it's easy for me when things are going smooth, I get comfortable. And I'll forget that the enemy is rowing back and forth 24-7. Not to give him no credit, but that's his job. That's why Jesus got him down here on the earth. And I have to remember constantly and try to share with others, we are in a spiritual battle. I can't love my daughter too hard. I can't love my son too hard. Because if I do, I'll put idols on them. And I don't forget about Jesus. They have a life to live. I have to learn how to use that tough love. Somewhere along the line, the ladies got to cut their biblical cord. And the men don't have to be stand up and be a father that God created us to be. No one want to see their daughter, their son, babies in prison or whatever, but they make mistakes. They choose to do different things. I did that. I spent 17 years locked up, all because I wanted to do it my way. When you get out, all you hear in these civilized society we live in, uh, okay, the love of God is grace. We understand that. I can only love you so much, but there's, you got to be accountable for your own way of doing things. You speaking on foundation, every one of us have a, have, have a foundation in Jesus, and it ain't easy. It's every day. Every day. We pray all the time, but we're still, we got to be conscious of things that's going on around us. And, and it's not an easy walk. You know, you can cry, you can go through changes, man, but it's still the same thing. And Jesus had his reasons why these things are happening because that's what builds our faith. If we were never going through nothing, man, we can't grow. Not the way Christ wants us to grow. And, and, yeah. and, and I don't mean to uh, shatter no female or no male uh, uh, a problem because we all got it. I was talking with a brother last week. Man, I do some time in county jail, but look here, where are you today, mentally? Are you back out on the street thinking the same way? You got to replace these things, man, and it's not easy. I was a heroin addict, and I don't compare that to marijuana and crack this here, but we all know the game of, of the drugs. It's supposed to be the thing that, uh, you know, that's it. Some of us went so far out there, we didn't come back. Sometime today, I think, Lord, I think, you, I think I still got the right mind, but some days it don't be like that. And Vietnam wasn't no different with me. That's why pastor and I get along so well. They said, man, I was in Afghanistan. He was in Vietnam. I, yeah, I took two tours over there. That's how silly it was for me to be in that uniform. And at 70-some years old today, I still have repercussions behind Vietnam. It ain't so much about the drug, the marriage, this, that, and other. We got all kind of issues going on. Mm -hmm. And we have to be aware that Jesus wants us to lean on him for everything. From exactly. six on down the line, man. Yep. You know, if your wife decides to, oh, I don't feel like doing that night, we'll respect her individuality. And that's a lot of things, man, that I talk about in my classes, man, because we men seem that though married or single, we don't understand that the woman was, is constantly Jesus made her totally different than he made us. Yeah, it took me like uh, 45 years to even get that message. Okay, but that's where you go. I think one of the things that you shared is if, if Satan's going to attack, he's not going to go after those who are happily going <laughs> right. his way. You go and adjust and work on the, yep. his problem areas, which are those who True that. confess Christ as yep. Savior. Life built on the foundation of Jesus Christ will stand. 
So today's sermon title, Foundation. Think about it. Think about it for yourself. How important is a firm foundation? How good were things when I'm doing them on my own? Versus when I'm looking to scripture and to prayer and good, good songs instead of some of the other things that you can fill your mind with or television with scripture. I have to say, how great thou art. Gosh, I love that song. Um, and and for those of you who are old, you'll remember Elvis. And I don't know that Elvis was a believer. But his version of how great thou art, if it doesn't get the hair on your arm standing up, you, you've got to check your pulse. Um, anyway, sorry. Oh, hey, Ed, it's us up here again. Oh, I do have another thought. Uh, I wanted to share this because I wasn't sure how it was going to land. Uh, and as Ed said, we're not professionals. We've never done this before. And some of the things that I said may hurt. Some of the things may hurt a lot. Um, and that may be good because as I look at this, I'm not saying it from a perspective that I've got it all together. Uh, as much of this as you hear coming to you, I can be pointing it right back at me. I think about my own walk, my own obedience, how I think of God's mercy and God's grace to me through Jesus. But I've used this before. The pastor I know once said, it's about direction, it's not about perfection. It's where am I today and which way am I head facing tomorrow? And how am I doing that? On the basis of Jesus. Okay, so. However you want to do it, Dan. Um, one thing that, that occurred to me when, when Dale was speaking was in, in terms of a foundation, um, it, it never changes. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, the world will tell you, you really don't have to do that anymore. That Jesus stuff, you know, you just got to do this, do that. Or, or you can still do the Jesus stuff, but you really don't have to do this or that. It really never changes. It's the same, what we need. Um, we need Jesus. Um, we need to rely on him. And we need to worship him and understand his work. That's it. And it's kind of like me being a cracked home builder, if you will. Um, in general, there are some exceptions, but in general, you know, the footing of your basement wall, your foundation, needs to be twice as wide as the thickness of the wall going up. That's it. There's not, oh, well, today I only want to make it this wide and save on the concrete. Well, it doesn't work that way. If you do that, it'll crumble, it'll fall, it won't stand. So it really never changes. Um, you need a firm foundation, and it doesn't change. Same inside of us. So I just wanted to add that because it occurred to me while you were talking. Um, so because, partly because, Dale and I aren't the most technical people when it comes to PowerPoint, so we couldn't quite get these songs on here. We put the lyrics of a couple of songs on here, and I just want to read them. They're, they're kind of good. So, and this first one is an old hymn, uh, How Firm a Foundation. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he has said? to you who for refuge to Jesus have fled. Verse two, fear not, I am with thee, O be not dismayed, for I am thy God and will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand, upheld in my righteous omnipotent hand. It's pretty cool, pretty strong words. Um, and you're happy that I didn't sing that, reading it through. <laughs> And then, of course, Cornerstone, um, most of you know this song for sure. Uh, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. So that's what I want to end with there.